Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Andy. Um, I'm the head of the uh, commercial department for Mortgages for Business. I'm joined um, by our marketing director, Jenny Barrett, um, and we're going to have a, a chat today um, about holiday lets. Um, have a little story to tell, first of all. Um, back around two and a half years ago, um, I sat at my desk and was looking for, um, looking for a holiday let for a family holiday. Um, which was due in August, and I was having a look through the prices of these holiday lets, and it, what, what appealed to me was that there's going to be so much money that you'd have to spend going on holiday. So I started to do some investigative work into um, financing um, a holiday let in order that people could, um, you know, see the, uh, the landlords could see the benefits of um, having a holiday let mortgage. Um, so. Um, we move on to the first point, um, why get into holiday lets? Well, the holiday let market at the moment with the mortgage providers is, is very difficult to find finance for. Um, and I found this out when um, I had a raft of inquiries come off the back of my, uh, my first uh, blog that I undertook. And I had to review the market in quite a lot of detail because I just did not have the right products the right product mix for the clients to be able to take the commercial mortgages. So I spent probably the next sort of two and a half years, you know, generating contacts with lenders, um, having a look at each um, policy uh, from various lenders, campaigning with lenders for new holiday let mortgages. Um, so first of all, why get into holiday lets? Uh, first of all, um, holiday lets, I mean, it's a, it's a booming market. Um, there's um, a lot of staycations where people are staying at home and um, holidaying rather than actually going abroad. It has become a lot more expensive to um, travel abroad um, because the pound to euro situation, it costs more to go on holiday. But on the plus side, we are actually getting more tourism into the country because if you imagine that you lived in France and you were holidaying to the UK, um, you'd get a lot more pound notes for your euros. So we, we have seen a lot more uh, people come into the leisure sector. Um, and on the back of that, landlords are starting to purchase more um, holiday let mortgages. Secondly, um, tax efficiencies for holiday let. Um, we're all very well aware that um, the taxation changes for buy-to-let landlords um, is going to reduce the amount of interest you can offset against your profit and loss account moving forward up to about 2020. Um, in 2020, I think you can reclaim 25% of the interest. With a commercial mortgage, um, the profit, the costs uh, for running the holiday let can be offset against the profit and loss account. So, for example, um, loan interest can be offset. Um, we can offset um, the cost of um, repairs. Um, there's various uh, tax efficiencies for running a holiday let, and landlords have tuned into that. And they're also seeing greater yields on holiday lets. Um, I was sat down with Jenny earlier, um, taking a look at her holiday let that she runs from Camber in Sussex. Um, and she, we worked out the yield, and she was yielding over 12.5% on a holiday let mortgage in her second year. So fantastic returns that are actually um, available. Um, also with trading businesses, holiday lets, commercial mortgages, um, if, if you're selling a trading business, um, that trading business has um, an element of goodwill. If that trading business is sold, you can um, obtain capital gains tax rollover relief. So, for example, if you're selling a holiday let business and purchasing a larger complex, for example, then you can offset that, offset the, the capital gains tax. Again, that's something you need to talk to um, with an accountant that could put you straight on, on those points. Also, portfolio diversification. Um, landlords, uh, these days, they tend to have a few buy-to-let properties in their portfolio. They will have some commercial investment property, and maybe sometimes they'll have some semi-commercial properties within their portfolio. And now they may also have some holiday let property within, that, within the portfolio. Another reason for buying um, a holiday let, um, sometimes um, if you've got sort of maybe more than sort of 40, 50% of the property is, is, is mixed use or holiday lets, um, the stamp duty on a holiday let is considerably less. And I just ran a calculation just a little bit earlier, 500,000 pound 
um, buy to let mortgage um, would equate to additional stamp duty at around about the £30,000 mark. Whereas we have a mixed-use property, so somewhere where you can live as well as trade your holiday let business, the stamp duty comes in at around about £14,500. So the stamp duty overall, it, it can be 50% lower than a buy-to-let mortgage. So then we look at the commercial or buy-to-let mortgages. Um, now, with the holiday let mortgages, um, both options are available to applicants. Uh, the lenders would generally like the people to be homeowners with no first-time buyers. Um, the lenders would like the applicants to have um, a good credit profile, so a good, you know, a 900 plus on an Experian search. Uh, the lenders would also like the applicants to have um, a reasonable level of income, so over 25,000 pounds of um, provable income is um, is helpful. We often see a lot of people that are holiday letting um, or purchasing holiday let properties. Um, they generally have a very high outside income, maybe one or two rental properties, and the holiday let business may be a little bit of a sideline uh, for them. Um, maybe one partner um, can run the holiday let while the other is at work. But if, if, if applicants have got high outside income and are asking for top brick of the chimney, for example, 75% loan to value, then the high income will be very helpful. Now, for the higher-valued holiday lets, um, the lenders will assess based on assured short-hold tenancy income. So what that means is that if you're after a higher-valued property, for example, a half a million pound cottage in, say, Cornwall, that might rent for 12 or 1,300 pounds on assured short-hold tenancy income, it's going to be very hard to get a mortgage for £375,000 on that property. And this is where a lot of applicants for holiday lets become unstuck because the standard vanilla buy-to-let lenders that are charging the rates from around sort of 1.8%, they will always assess how much you can borrow based on the assured short-hold tenancy income. Now, that became clear to me a couple of years ago. And so... The research that we've undertaken at Mortgages for Business, we've now been able to find lenders that can um, assess the debt serviceability based on projected holiday letting income. So these lenders, they will, um, they will take a look at the property details, take a look at the background of the applicant, um, and then they will say, okay, tell me, or tell, tell, tell us how much projected holiday letting income can actually be achieved. They will ask for a letter, a side letter from um, a reputable holiday let company, for example, Sykes Homes, that will tell the lender what the projected income is and the, the lender will make that assessment of debt serviceability on the projected income. Now that is generally unheard of in the industry and um, it's, you know, we have access to providers that can lend to you based on projected income. So how to qualify for finance? Um, ideally, um, if you have holiday letting experience, fantastic. Makes it much easier to get the underwriting undertaken. However, if you haven't got holiday letting experience, if you own a number of rental investment properties, for example, buy-to-let properties, um, then the lender will class that as good experience. You've been shown that you've been able to manage your assured short hold tenancy uh, property. Um, you can, you, you know, deal with um, deal with the agents that um, that manage the property for you, um, and you're experienced. Uh, you can deal with experienced landlords. Okay, high net worth or access to additional income. Again, we we'll touch on this again. If you if you have a high if you have a high net worth, um, you've got property assets in the background, um, you have um, outside income as well. That's that's uh, you know a good pointer for the lender. Um, if the property has a good track record, and what we mean by that is if it's an existing holiday let property, um, that if there are financial accounts uh, for that property. Um, then the lender will be able to make an informed assessment of how much they can lend based on the adjusted net profits of that trading holiday let. Um, if it's a brand new holiday let, 
fantastic if you can get your numbers together um, that you can do um, a two or three page business plan just so that the lender can see that you've thought about how you're going to let and market the property um, and how much income that you expect to, to get in. Jenny will be having a chat later about her experience of holiday letting. So which properties and where? This is, this is crucial. So lenders would like to see um, and if it's an existing successful holiday let property that it has financial accounts. Um, properties need to be um, in a popular holiday destination and tourist area. Lenders will lend on freehold property. In Scotland, they will lend on freehold property. Um, and we have um, lenders that can, you know, lend as far north as the islands and the Isle of Skye, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, it's a booming market there, I understand. Um, lenders will lend on virtual freehold property or long leasehold property. Um, and they can lend on um, lease, commercial leasehold property as well. Um, if they're lending on leasehold property, they may call into account um, to get additional security. Um, lenders will lend on houses, flats, multi-unit properties. And when I say multi-unit properties, I mean a property that's one freehold title that might have three flats within the block. Um, quite often see that in holiday locations. Um, they will also um, lend to um, owner occupiers and mixed use. So for example, if you had sold your residential property and you still have a good income source, you're looking to purchase um, a holiday let property where you will live as well as it has some holiday lets in the grounds. Um, so long as the residential uh, accommodation doesn't make up any more than 40% of the overall area of the of the holiday let business. The lenders can let the commercial lenders can lend to you, and again they can take into account projected holiday letting income. If there's over 40% um, owner occupier space, if, for example, that's where your family is going to live, then that's not a problem as well because we have lenders that um, are qualified to sell re um, residential mortgages as well. So they will do a regulated interview with the applicants to make sure that your provable income will support the mortgage that you take on. So for example, you could have um, non-trading farms with holiday lets and grounds. Um, you sold your residential property and you're going to live there and trade it. Seafront properties, um, we financed before. Um, properties with um, thatched roofs as well. We've got one that's um, due to complete shortly. Um, and so lenders will lend on those. They'll lend on listed property as well. We have a couple of holiday let providers that will lend on holiday lets that have restrictive covenants in place. So for example, if um, a property um, is restricted to holiday letting only, um, obviously the values will be a little bit lower, but we have lenders that can help um, with that situation. So um, holiday let properties that are harder to finance, uh, rural properties, um, if you're in a rural location, for example, you may be in the, in, in the highlands of Scotland, miles away from any sort of towns or, or villages, they can be trickier to, uh, to finance. Once again, higher valued um, properties, um, the debt service cover could mean that they are more difficult to finance. Also, the holiday let providers, they have um, certain areas of the United Kingdom where, they may be an, where there may be an oversupply of holiday let mortgages. So, we, for example, um, places like Brighton in Sussex, a lot of holiday let property there. Um, Canterbury and Kent, a good tourist area, a lot of holiday let property. Uh, places like, uh, for example, Padstow, um, Sandbanks in Dorset and North Norfolk, a lot of supply of holiday let properties there. So the loan to value restrictions the lenders could potentially reduce, especially for the higher value properties, reduced down to potentially 60% loan to value. Um, leasehold flats as well. Always bear this in mind. If you're looking to per purchase a leasehold flat in a holiday location, then you will need to actually check that within the lease that there's not restrict that there's no restrictions that you can let that property on a holiday let basis so please do please do check that out so moving on to um how much can you borrow um 
most of our landlords are generally looking to borrow sort of in the region of the sort of the 70 to 75 percent loan to value mark that seems to be a, a common sort of benchmark um, but typically we're seeing the holiday let deals um, going out at between 60 percent and 75 percent loan to value we have holiday let mortgages available for um, sole traders um, partnerships holiday lets for limited companies um, or, or indeed limited liability partnerships. What we have seen a lot of recently is some higher net worth people um, that um, they tend to be purchasing the holiday lets in a limited company. And the reason for that is that um, the tax efficiencies, if you have a higher rate taxpayer paying 40 or 50% tax and they've got a holiday let bringing them in 40,000 pounds a year, they may be paying 40 or 50% tax on that income through a sole trader account. So some of the landlords will say, well, let's borrow in the company name. Um, they might not have a need to draw from the profits of that limited company, and they will only pay corporation tax on the profit of that company. So it reduces the tax liability a little bit, and it also leaves a little bit more within the company account to be able to um, purchase further holiday lets. If the business has run well, they can maybe buy a, a, another holiday let at some point in the future. Also, if someone's setting up a little business and um, two or three holiday lets within the business, um, then potentially they're going to sell it at some point. They may be able to sell that limited company that owns the asset. We all know stamp duty is very high. If you buy a trading company which owns the assets, um, you're able to purchase that company um, by the way of share transfer. Share transfer, I understand, attracts around about half a percent stamp duty rather than a commercial stamp duty at sort of 5% plus. So that's a, that's a positive. It's a positive for someone that's selling the property and it's a positive that, for someone that could be purchasing that limited company. So again, they go back to the tax efficiencies. Interest only capital and interest repayment or part and part repayment are available. Um, interest only um, is a very popular option because you're, if you borrow on an interest only basis at say 250,000 after five years your interest only payments are still on the 250,000 so you're offsetting all that interest against your profit and loss account um, and that um, you know that's a benefit for um, uh, from an accountancy perspective. Um, capital and interest repayments are available or part and part. Um, we have had times where clients have um, already owned buy to let property and they might be looking to purchase a holiday let property and then borrow at 80% or 90% loan to value. Now, providing their existing rental properties have a good bit of equity in there and the lender has the ability to take a second charge over that property and a first charge over the holiday let property, then you can factor in additional security or make weight security and potentially borrow above the 75% uh, loan to value bracket. So we move on to rates and availability. We're in the marketplace. We've got access to 13 active lenders from um, building societies, um, high street banks that will lend on trading holiday lets. Uh, we've got access to um, with tier two providers, so the challenger banks, uh, the likes of you know, Shawbrook, Interbay, um, Aldermore Bank. They t challenger banks take in credit balances and they will um, lend it out. They will lend it out a little bit of a premium. The rates tend to be a bit higher than the high street lending rates and the building societies. So rates depend on the loan to value. Um, for example, if you're looking at, say, a limited company mortgage um, for um, a holiday let purchase at, say, 60% loan to value, then we could be looking at pricing um, from around about the 3.6% mark. Um, lending, to, lending to individuals um, is very much cheaper, pricing from um, around about 1.7%. I had a look at our mortgage flow this morning to see what rates were. 1.7%, £895 arrangement fee for that loan. Uh, the variable rates have crept up a little bit um, a little bit recently, but overall, historically cheap to borrow. Um, £1,700 of interest on every £100,000 of borrowing. You only have to do the maths on that to work out that uh, that is a great rate. 
Um, lender arrangement fees, again, these will vary. Um, the vanilla buy to let providers uh, for holiday lets, they will look from probably arrangement fees from about £995. But if you move on to um, a com commercial mortgage, the rates could be that much higher. And we have, we have seen rates as high as 2% as an arrangement fee. Um, they, the lenders will add that to the loan account, so that's obviously helpful. Um, my colleague Paul um, completed a, um, a commercial mortgage, mixed-use uh, mortgage, um, last month, um, and he picked up um, just just over a million pounds of borrowing, and the actual interest rate um, was, I think it was low. It was about, it was around about the, it was around the 3.99% mark, but the lender only charged 1% arrangement fee uh, for that, which was a great deal, great deal for the applicant and the borrower. So we move on to, if you're a buy-to-let landlord. So we, we have an awful lot of buy-to-let landlords in the marketplace, um, and um, there are a number of them that have um, started letting their buy-to-let properties um, via Airbnb. Um, now, this is a big, this is a big problem. Um, a buy-to-let mortgage is put in place so that you let your property out under an assured short-hold tenancy arrangement. Um, that is what it's there to do. But people have been misusing that. They have been holiday letting property via Airbnb. Now, the big issue is if the lender finds out. If the lender finds out, they can ask for the loan to re be repaid. And we have had a, a number of occasions where clients have come to us saying, our lender needs to be repaid, need to have the right, um, the right product in place at the outset. Um, for example, we had um, a client that was um, doing stag nights and hen nights from one of their, um, one of their properties. Um, and the reason that the lender found out that they were holiday letting was because there was a lot of noise. Um, and there were many, many, many complaints that went into the local council about the noise. And ultimately, the council checked up a little bit and informed the lender that someone was holiday letting rather than um, r rather than a, a standard short, a short, short hold tenancy arrangement. So get the right product in place at the outset is absolutely, absolutely crucial. Moving on, so we have um, a couple of case studies. Um, recent transactions that we've completed. So first of all, um, we had um, a thatched four bed cottage in a Cornish coastal village beautiful property dating back from the 1200s um, no holiday let restrictions it was um, just a normal a normal house purchased by a first-time holiday let operator um, but um, a client that was of reasonable net worth with um, over three rental investment properties in the background um, we were able to get this case assessed based on the assured short hold tenancy income of one thousand six hundred pounds per month we didn't have to get the lender to um, underwrite based on projected holiday letting income. Purchase price was £442,500 in total, um, and the loan was for £330,000. We picked up 75% loan to value, so that's towards the higher end of the marketplace. Cracking five year fixed rate was put in place, 3.63% fixed for five years, um, and the applicant was able to get interest only on that um, mortgage arrangement. Lender arrangement fee, it was towards the higher side, 2% lender arrangement fee, which, uh, which was able to be added to the loan account. Um, annual rental income expected by the client, evidenced by a business plan, was £40,000 in total. So a cracking, you can see there'd be a cracking return there. Mortgage interest payments, 1000 a month. You see you've shade over £12,000 a year. Rental income coming in of 40000 so happy days. We move on to um, a holiday let um, for uh, this one of my colleagues, Paul, wrote this deal. Uh, it, was a, it was a house and five holiday lets on two separate titles, residential and commercial. Originally, the applicant came to Paul just to get the mortgage for the holiday lets. Um, but the, um, the bank, the residential mortgage provider um, uh, that the applicant went to directly said that the property was too close to the commercial uh, properties. They tried three lenders were able to unable to uh, get that lender to uh, the residential provider to lend them the money. So we found a lender that could lend on mixed use basis. Um, they took a charge over the residential property, took a charge over the commercial property. Uh, applicants were high net worth individuals with solid outside income. Uh, the wife was going to run the business um, and there was projected 
forecasted rental income at £78,000 in total. Purchase price was high, £1.7 million. Uh, mortgages for business was able to raise a loan of um, a million pounds, a million, just a shade over a million pounds on that deal, 63% loan to value. Um, interest rate, uh, we did part and part, so we did part repayment, capital and interest on the residential property, um, and we were able to facilitate an interest only payment on the um, on the holiday lets, but overall the rate was 3.99%. I believe that was a discounted deal for um, three years. After the three years, the lender will put another um, another mortgage uh, product in place for a small fee of around about £500. So there's a couple of case studies there for you. Um, I'm now going to um, hand you over to Jenny Barrett. Um, Jenny is going to tell you a little bit about her experiences of um, marketing um, a holiday let property. Jenny had a holiday let property for two years. Um, it's based in um, a very nice location in East Sussex um, called Camber Sands. And I'll hand you, up, hand you over to Jenny. I will come back online for, um, for questions later. Please do feel free to um, start emailing those questions through if need be. Uh, but over to the master, um, Jenny Barrett, for her experience. So I'll start by saying um, that the holiday let I've got, uh, I was very lucky to have been left some money by some family and didn't quite know what to do with it. So decided to purchase a property and initially we thought that we might live in it but eventually it became clear that it was going to be a little bit too far away for me to commute um, to the office here just north of Maidstone from the Sussex coast. I wasn't prepared to, to commute for more than an hour especially along the M20 motorway. So instead we decided to gut the property which we actually purchased for um, £205,000. It's a three bedroom semi-detached 1970s typical house um, that's got three bedrooms, uh, a large sitting room, a small galley kitchen and a conservatory that doubles up as a dining room. It's got enclosed garden at the back, so it's safe for kids and dogs. Uh, it's got off-street parking for two cars, three at a pinch, um, and it's conveniently situated in a cul-de-sac um, that's just off the main drag. And actually, you can see the sand dunes from the back garden and, and the back window. So we are right in the thick of it, but um, without being in any of the sort of noisier parts that on the main drag that happened during the, the summertime. Um, so we spent a year fiddling around doing the property up. Um, it had previously been occupied by a retired couple and when they moved on it did actually need a bit of gutting. Um, you know there were green swirly carpets and um, flowery wallpaper um, etc. So we um, pretty much we stripped it back without spending an awful lot of money. We stripped wallpaper and took away the uh, the carpets and what have you and pretty much just painted it all white. Um, and then we had a free range with all the decorating. Um, so once we'd got it prepared for the market, um, it, pretty much a big shop at IKEA was um, was what happened to furnish it. Uh, we looked at how we were going to market it and um, as I come to work every day, my, it, the, the marketing of it and, and the managing of the property is very much um, down to my husband. So any questions that you might have later on that I can't answer, I will go away and find out for you because I'm not a hands-on manager, that's my husband. But as I'm in marketing, I did have some, some input into the setup. Um, so, the first thing I would suggest you do is have a website um, because if you're going to market it, you don't really want to have to rely on other people's websites if you can draw business in yourself. So we went away and used WordPress to create our own website. It was a relatively easy process. It wasn't expensive. 
we literally chose um, a template that was free to use. We bought a domain name um, and pretty much we were up and running. So I don't think the costs were any more than, um, I can't even remember, maybe a hundred pounds max, may, potentially maybe not even that. Um, sorry, we're just waiting for the page to be turned. That's lovely. So here you go, here's my website. Um, we chose a name for the property, Looney Dunes, nice little play on words there. Um, and off, off we went. Um, so on the website, one of the things you need to do is um, make sure you've got fabulous photographs. Basically, you're going to sell your property based on what it looks like. So as well as having everything up to scratch in it, you need to make sure you photographed it well. Um, we found that our iPhones pretty much do that for us these days. Um, but if you're not very good at taking photos, I would recommend somebody that can do that for you to do it because um, that's what is going to sell your property. Also list all the facilities, um, really good comprehensive descriptions of what you've got um, available in each room, um, just so that everybody knows what they're going to need to bring with them and what they can leave behind. So for example, we made it a top priority to put in um, high speed broadband internet access. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons that we are um, as popular as we are. We also um, pitched our property at the family market. So whilst we've got three bedrooms, uh, one is a double, one is a double and or two singles. So um, it's multifunctional and the smaller room has bunk beds in it. We've also got facilities for babies. So we've got a carry cot, high chair, that sort of thing, potties, you name it. Um, and everything is explained really clearly. One thing that I would highly recommend that you get on your website is to have an add-on that's a booking engine. Um, and if you just flip to the next slide, I'll show you what I mean. So on our website, we use Bookerlet, and it allows customers that come to our website to book directly with us. Now, this means um, that we don't have to pay the commissions that um, the providers like TripAdvisor and Airbnb and Owners Direct and Booking.com will charge you for making a booking. So it's a really, really good investment. I think uh, Bookalette cost us something like 150, 160 pounds a year to have this facility on our website. It makes it really easy for the customer. They can communicate with you, they can make a reservation, they can confirm a booking, and the calendar will also sync with the other booking sites as well so that um, you don't find yourself with uh, multiple books, lets. Um, so it's really quite easy and I highly recommend it, particularly if you're going to do a lot of the marketing yourself through social media or Google or family recommendations. It's a real money saver. So Google, um, once you've got your website up and running, you need to submit it to Google so that you can be found. Google will take a while to index it. And uh, what you must be prepared for is that unless you're a search engine optimization wizard, you are not going to be able to compete with the likes of um, TripAdvisor and Airbnb and the other holiday let companies. So don't even try. Um, what you should be doing is submitting it to the, the, the Google local facility so that you come up when people search for property locally. So I've um, I've got that for you. I've done that. And as you can see on the right hand side of the screen, uh, when you do find the website, um, up pops um, a little summary of our property and the ratings that customers have given it when they've gone on and done a Google review. Yep, um, as my colleague pointed out, we have a five star rating. Hooray! <laughs> um, um, and our five star reviews are on 
um, Google, uh, we have five star reviews on TripAdvisor and five star reviews on um, Owners Direct. In fact, we've never had less than a five star review. And I think that's because of the care and attention and the time that my husband spends in making sure that the property and the service that we provide is absolutely tip top. The property is always spankingly clean. Everything always works. And if it doesn't, we're there to fix it immediately. Um, I'll come on to occupancy rates and what have you in a bit, but the next thing I want to look at um, is the, the local search. So if you're using Google to find a holiday let to actually use yourself, um, you might go onto Google Maps. And that's where the local facility really plays a part. As you can see, my holiday let is very close to the beach, which means that it's going to be um, picked up by people looking for a holiday let much more readily than people trawling through sites where there's just lots and lots of lists of property because it's very easy to see from the map where you're occupied. Um, <laughs> yes, um, so that, that's another top tip too. Uh, okay, so Get yourself on Google, and if you've got any questions about that, do ask me at the end, and I'll, I'll explain more about that. Social media, this is where you can advertise yourself for pretty much nothing, uh, just by viral networking. Um, you can see here I've put our Facebook page up, and if I'm honest, we don't do very much social media, um, because that would be fall under my responsibility and as I'm working at Mortgages for Business I don't get much time to do that and my husband thinks that social media is the devil's spawn so he steers clear of it um, however so occasionally I do it and I ask people to like and share the page and it has garnered us um, one confirmed booking uh, which we didn't have to pay anything for um, and if I were to spend more time on it, I think it would create more. You can um, adapt your page, you can set up links and, and all sorts um, on Facebook. So it is really good. Uh, it's a good place to start um, if you're new to social media. It's quite easy. Um, Twitter, again, if you're a Twitter user, you can advertise there. Pinterest, if you're very good at scrapbooks, that's that's a popular one, but I would say if you're going to start out um, on social media and you like pictures, go for Instagram. There's an awful lot of opportunity there. People just like looking at the pictures. That's where your good photography skills come in. Um, and if you know how to use hashtags, that's how you can reach an enormously wide audience because Instagram is a lover of hashtags, whereas Twitter, you can only use a small number. Okay, so um, moving on, uh, TripAdvisor, um, obviously I, I think probably everybody has heard of TripAdvisor, uh, that the actual site for the uh, holiday lettings is actually does what it says on the tin, like here at Mortgages for Business, it's called letting, holidaylettings.co.uk. Um, you will pay anywhere from 3% plus VAT for every single booking that you get from them, but there are highly um, recommended bookings agency um, and I recommend that that is one of the avenues that you use to get your bookings in um, I wouldn't restrict yourself um, yeah go for TripAdvisor that, that's a highly recommended one in my opinion I would also recommend Owners Direct who um, now trade under the name Home Away they are more expensive um, but it's all relative. Um, their prices start from 8% plus VAT, or you can choose a different option where you pay an annual subscription up front and then you don't pay uh, per booking. Uh, it depends how active you, 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 you plan to be for your letting as to which option you're going to go for. Um, I think at the moment we go for the per booking option. Um, and all of these sites, they're very photograph heavy and they also list all the facilities just like your own website. Um, and so if you're struggling as to what to put on your website, 
go to one of these websites and see how they lay them out and see what information they put on and just use it as a template. It would be as easy as that. Um, the next one is Airbnb, which we're currently not listed on. Um, we did list on it in the first year, but we had no bites and we were quite concerned about this um, until I discussed it with a friend who also has a holiday letting business, this time in Spain. And he said when he first went on Airbnb, he had no traction at all. And so he paid a friend to book a holiday through him um, and then write a review and he gave him the money back. And clearly, the review that was written was um, an immaculate one and that started my friend off on um, Airbnb and he now no longer uses any other bookings agency um, although he does promote it himself on Facebook um, so that's just a little tip for you there um, so how much business can you expect to get in um, before I go on to the other sites, um, we've been up and running for two years and um, we probably charge an average of £1,000 a week um, and in our first and second year we roughly had 60% occupancy, which is pretty good. Um, uh, so, we, so that generated uh, around about £30,000 of income for us which I guess is 12.5%, um, 12-ish, 12, 12-13% 12, yield, which, which is really good for actually um, not an awful lot of marketing once we'd set up the website and uh, registered with TripAdvisor and Owners Direct. Um, I'm sure that we could get those occupancy rates up if we actually constantly and spent a lot more time doing that. Um, the thing that does take the time is managing the property. My husband is over there regularly and whilst he has a cleaner um, at um, I think 12, 15 pounds an hour, perhaps she's very good and she's local, she lives opposite. Um, uh, he is also there whilst she is cleaning, he is checking that everything works, he is mowing the lawn, he's doing the weeding, he's checking the locks, you name it. It does take a lot of time to prepare a property to make sure that it's fit for purpose. And if you want to keep your um, review ratings five star, that's what, that's what you need to do. Um, and also you can find yourself little niches. So for example, out of season, we allow dogs um, in, in the property because out of season the beaches um, are, are dog friendly so we're dog friendly too and in order to cater for that we do charge an additional cleaning fee just to make sure that the property is actually spick and span and hair free for when the next uh, visitors come because some people have allergens and what have you so if you're going to let um, do a holiday let with pets then you need to make sure that it's properly cleaned out each time um, uh, so pretty much that's all I've got to tell you about it uh, somebody's asking me a question if anybody's got any questions uh, fire away I'll be happy to answer any, any I can't answer um, I will go away and find out for you and uh, also I'll return you now to Andy because I should imagine that, that the financing bit is the more important bit for you in, in the first instance. Uh, do feel free to give me a chat, uh, give me a call to, to chat through any questions you've got to, um, if that's your preferred method of finding um, stuff out in this regard. Um, but call Andy for the finance. I can't help you there, I'm afraid. Right, I'm going to hand back over to Andy. Thanks for your time today, and I hope it's been useful. Hello again. I'd just like to say um, thank you for Glenn who's joined us today to um, help us with the presentation and answer some um, some questions that have come up. Um, mortgages for business got access to the whole of the market. Uh, as I say, 13 odd providers. Um, we run with six commercial consultants from our Kings Hill offices. Um, our, my direct line 01732471644. Um, Glenn, Paul, Gareth, and Steve, also happy to answer questions on the normal mortgages uh, for business line. 
We have two commercial consultants based in our Wilmslow office, John Cannon and Robin Tate. Um, if it's an acquisition of a northern property, uh, please feel free to speak to speak to them. Uh, thank you to everyone that has attended the uh, webinar uh, today. Um, I do help, hope that it has been helpful for you. Thank you.